Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm making a response video to a comment made on my Hypergrace video by Medic for Christ. If you haven't seen my Hypergrace video, I highly recommend you go watch it right now and come back. I'll put a link in the description. I'll also put two links to Mike Winger on Judgment Salvation and Mockers and Scoffers. They said this as a response, quote, Jesus sided with sinners. In fact, that was one of the very accusations thrown against him by the religious zealots who put him on the cross. This man sits with sinners. Even the sinners follow him. The goal of Christ was to save sinners, not condemn them. You sound more like the Pharisee standing in judgment than one who understands what Christ did on that cross. Judgment is coming upon the world for sin, without a doubt. Christ commands us to walk in love and depart from our old way of life, without a doubt. But salvation comes by belief, not by performance. And then they went on to quote Romans 4, but they took it way out of context. So I'm going to read Romans 4, 4 through 8. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. David also spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. Jesus sat with sinners to deliver their demons and save them from continuing in sin with his teachings. Who else was going to sit with them and teach them? Surely not the Pharisees. They thought they were better than everyone else and didn't even try to connect with sinners. Jesus outright corrected people who were sinning, especially when he whipped the merchants selling sacrificial animals for profit in the house of the Lord. I think people are mixing up salvation with grace and works under the law. Jesus is our salvation. Grace is his forgiveness of sin and works are our wages. The wages of sin is death, but when we try our best to overcome sin, God is gracious and will forgive us because he knows our hearts. What's the difference between good works under law and grace? The key difference between good works under law and grace is the motivating source behind them. Under law, good works are required in order to gain blessing and avoid judgment. Under grace, the blessing is freely given and the judgment fully borne by Christ at Calvary all the moment we believe. When you accept Jesus through faith, you will not want to sin anymore. You may still sin, but not as before. Jesus never said, believe in me and keep on sinning. It'll all be forgiven. While puffing on a joint saying, it's all good, man. Every little thing is going to be all right. So with the adulterous woman, everyone else who had sinned couldn't judge her, but Jesus could. He can forgive sin, but I also believe he can also condemn. John ten eleven, Je Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. And from now on, sin no more. Judas believed in Jesus, but he betrayed him knowing full well who Jesus was. He did know what he was doing. John thirteen eight through 16 No, Peter protested. You will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, Unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, Then wash my hands and head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, A person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, Not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, Do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash at each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Tr slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. This is what Jesus says about those who betray him, including Judas. Matthew twenty six twenty four, The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would have been better for him not been born. Jesus was not pronouncing uh, general forgiveness for everybody who had ever sinned against him. No, I believe what Jesus did right here in Luke twenty three thirty four is saying, Lord, these people who are doing the work of executing me right now, they don't know what they're doing, Lord. Be compassionate to them. I would say that Judas is not included in that prayer, that Judas was not forgiven. He was the son of perdition. The King James Bible says perdition is an old word, but it's a powerful one. Perdition means destruction. 
When Jesus calls Judas the son of destruction, he means that Judas was a man who would be completely and absolutely sent to destruction, that he is the son of it. By the way, that same phrase, son of destruction, which communicates condem condemnation and damnation, is also used by the person that we commonly refer to as the Antichrist. You'll find that in 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Jesus does not justify the wicked. If you say he does, you are calling him an abomination. Sinners justify the wicked. Jesus is not a sinner. He is the Son of God, and his Father said he will not justify the wicked. Proverbs 17.15 He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. Salvation comes by belief, but performance comes after it. And performance after salvation can be equated to the parable of the talents. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. So that's like coming to Jesus and then not repenting of sin, just believing in him and not doing the, your best to come back. So, going on to number 19. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You who have been faithful over little, I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, I delivered two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Here, enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what's yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew not that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed, then you ought to have invested that money in the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was mine with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away, and cast the worthless servant into outer darkness." In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, what I'm telling you is this. Those who accept Jesus but don't do as he's taught, he'll take those who don't decide to change and give it to those who do. All right. Amen. God bless and take care of you guys.